All right, all right, all right. It's that time to code your first program. Are you ready to do this? Get set, let's go. So we're gonna make a simple MATLAB's application in the console because it's simple, doesn't require you to install a million things, and it's something you can actually show off to your friends and family. Now, before we jump into this, first things first, the code to this project is in the description. Also, I think it's important to let you know that this lesson is kind of acting as a placement test. If you're just beginning to program, you might struggle with understanding what's going on in the code. And if that is you, well, that's okay, because I structured this lesson to be just a little bit difficult to follow. Once you're able to code a project like this by yourself, then I don't think there's much this course can teach you at that point. But I encourage you to watch the whole thing and follow along anyway. Again, the code is in the description, so you can just refer to that and follow along with me. Because if you do the following, you will get the greatest inspiration to become a programmer. After you struggle, I encourage you to go through the rest of my course linked in the description or just check out the lessons on the stuff that wasn't easy to follow. I have over 20 videos teaching you how to code and those videos go in depth about their respective topics. Then, when you feel comfortable, come back to this lesson and see how well you do a second or third time coding your first project. And trust me, when you're able to look at how much you didn't understand in comparison to the next time you try and code your first project, you will not want to stop programming. Having programmed for 15 years, I can tell you that feeling pretty much summarizes programming very well. It can become quite addicting to chase but an addiction in the best way possible. However, if this is your second or third or more times coding your first project, I encourage you to not copy the code verbatim, but maybe create your own story or add if statements and functions to this Mad Labs game. Who knows? Your experimentation could start a whole new programming trend. Lastly, if you want to share your project with me, feel free to tweet it to me and I'd be happy to reply back to you. But now with all that stuff out the way, let's get started on coding your first program. And we're going to make this application in two different languages, because I think it can be really helpful for you to see how they compare and contrast. And plus, you'll pretty much learn two languages at once. So on the left is a language C Sharp using the IDE Visual Studio, which should interest you if you want to do Windows development, or if you want to make games using one of the most popular game engines called Unity. And on the right is a language Python 3 using the IDE Visual Studio. Studio code, which should interest you if you want to get into more general programming or data science. All right, let's actually begin writing our Madlibs program. Now, before I write any project or program or prototype, what have you, I usually like to start what I like to call a skeleton. And what a skeleton is, it's a pretty much just like a step-by-step -step process in which you can expect to have to do in order to complete the actual project. And because this is a smaller, simpler program, we can simply do this by writing out a few comments. So first, I'm going to comment out uh, initialize variables. Init just stands for initialize. It's shorter, quicker to write. Uh, and then after that, simply get input from user. So we're going to initialize the variables and then we're going to ask the user to fill out the data for those variables. And then after that, we need to initialize, oops, init story. Um, and then after we initialize our story, then we simply just need to print our story. And in four parts, our program will be done. Simple, easy, and to the point. And now let's just do that same thing in Python, do a comment. And then init variables and then uh, get oops get input from user and then after that we're gonna init our story and then after that we need to print story easy as that next thing I'll do real quick is just beautify our script I'm just gonna add spaces between all the comments it just helps me read it and understand the different processes that need to take place. Perfect. All right, moving on. Uh, now, before we can do anything uh, over here, C sharp on the left, we kind of need our story because everything depends on our story, really. So I'm going to paste in a quote from the matrix. Uh, I'm just going to highlight all this real quick and hit tab a couple of times to beautify it, make it easier for me to read. But you are welcome to make up your own story. You're welcome to grab anything from the internet. Whatever you want to use as your Mad Lib story is completely fine. I even put this story in the description if you want to use it as well. 
Um, but there we have it. This is the story that we're going to use for C sharp. And now I'm going to do the same for Python. Just paste in that story string. Same exact thing, just in a Python format. Next thing you want to do is simply just print out our story. And in C sharp, you're going to want to do console.write line and then uh, mad lib story. Mad lib story. Boom. Semicolon done. And in Python, we're going to want to, oh, wait, I'm going to change this to say Mad Lib Story just so that it's the same. Mad Lib Story, perfect. And in Python, it's really simple. You simply just type print and then Mad Lib Story. Boom. So next, what we want to do is get input from user. But we can't really get any input from the user because we have no variables to pass to the user to collect data from. And so what our next actual step is we have to initialize our variables so that we can pass that to the user. And to initialize our variables, well, we need to turn our Madlib story into a bunch of variables. And we can do that quite simply. If you're at all familiar with the game Mad Libs, then you know the whole fun of the game is that you have some story or some text or something like that, and you replace all of the verbs, the nouns, the adjectives, etc., with words that are similar context, hopefully, but not exactly. And it makes for like really funny, interesting stories. And so, what we want to do is we want to scroll through our text and essentially replace verbs nouns, adjectives with variables. And the first one I'm going to do is the matrix. I'm just going to uh, put curly braces around this. Oh, yeah, I need to make this into an interpolated string. I'm going to do that for all of these strings. And this needs to be a variable, which is one word, the matrix, boom. Uh, and so I'm simply just going to come to init variables. I'm going to initialize the string data type and put the matrix in there. And now the matrix is a variable that we can ask the user for and they can change it to whatever they want. Um, and I kind of did this ahead of time. I went through the text and uh, picked a lot of verbs, nouns, adjectives that I thought would be interesting to change. Um, so I'm just going to go through and do that. For example, system is another one. I'm going to change system into a variable. I'm just going to add that to this list. And I'm just going to do that for the entire text. I'm going to skip it, though, because it's not that fun to watch. All right, so I went through my story and replaced all of the interesting verbs, nouns, adjectives, etc., with variables so that we can pass that to the user and they can put whatever words they want in there. But now I want to show you your first optimization trick. If you look at this line here, the sentence, it has businessmen, teachers, lawyers, carpenters. These are all professions. That's what, that's what they all have in common. And at the fact that they go back to back to back, we can do this really cool trick where we will initialize a string array. And we'll call them profession. And then, oh boy, I have to initialize it equals new string array of how many are there? One, two, three, four of four. And so now we can do this really cool trick where we come in here and just make this an interpolated string and i'm going to lowercase that just for good practice businessman and oops sorry that's not what i meant to do i meant to do profession zero because we're going to do a for loop which i'll get into in a second i'm going to copy this because i am lazy and i'm going to paste this here and i'm going to increment it and then i'm going to paste this here and then I'm going to increment it to two. And then the final profession, I'm going to increment this to three. All race start on zero, simple and to the point. And so now what we can do is when we get input from users, since there are four professions, they're all back to back, we can simply just write a simple for loop and ask the user for four different professions, one after another. And I'll show you how to do that in a bit. But there's also two adjectives down here that I also want to do this with. So I'm just going to initialize a new string array, call this adjective, AJ, ADJ, short for adjective, equals new string array of two. There's only two in there. And so here, turn this into interpolated string. This is going to be ADJ0. And I'm going to copy this because I am lazy. And this is the second adjective. I'm just going to increment. And there you have it. 
we now have our two string arrays. Uh, and final note, if you look down here, you'll see a bunch of errors for uh, unassigned local variables. And that's only because we have not assigned these variables to anything yet. I believe they're, they're null at the moment, which your program does not like. But we will be assigning the variables when we get the input from the user. And over in Python on the right, it's a lot of the same. Uh, first, let's turn all of our strings into interpolated strings. And it's just like C Sharp, except it's an F instead of a dollar sign. So I'm just going to add an F to all of these strings. Perfect. And let's pop out this variable right here, the matrix, or rather, let's turn this into a, a variable. We'll call it the matrix. And then let's initialize it up here. I'm going to do the matrix equals empty string. All right. And then let's do system next interpolated string system and then system I can just paste equals empty string and I'm going to go through and do this for all the interesting verbs adjectives and nouns in this text all right so I pulled out all the interesting words and turned them into variables and now I'm going to show you how to do that optimization trick over in Python so again we have these four professions and we want to turn that into a string array and to do that in Python we're just going to do profession equals brackets and there are four of them so we're going to do empty uh, string empty string empty string empty string four empty strings and there we have a an array with four strings in it um, that we can pass to the user and then they can change the beer whatever they want and it's the same as c sharp we're going to use interpolated string profession zero I'm lazy, I'm gonna copy this and paste it here, increment it, paste it here, increment it, paste it here, increment it, oops, yeah, it is three. And then we also want our adjective array, which is only two, so we're gonna do brackets, empty string, and then another empty string, two empty strings, and then that goes here, which is a edge zero. I'm going to copy this because I'm lazy and then paste it on dependent and then increment that and bada boom. Now the scripts are in the same exact state. All right. The final stretch. Let's get that input from the user. So first of all, there are two functions that we need to familiarize ourselves with. One we've already went over, and that is console dot right line. This is what we're going to use to print something to the console. And the second one is console dot read line. This is where we're going to use. Well, there is no input parameters, but this is going to return to us a string that we can set our string variables to. And this comes whatever the user types into the console, presses enter, that's what's going to be returned with console.readline. So for example, we can do the matrix equals console.readline. It's easy as that. So let's get started. I kind of ahead of time crafted a little interesting story that the user can have with the terminal just to make sure I'm not stumbling on this part. But uh, let's start off with console.writeline. Uh, let's just do like welcome user <laughs> welcome user and then we can go down and do another one console dot right line and then let's say let's play let's play a game of Mad Libs and then after that we can get their name so we can say um, Let's do another console dot right line and then please share with me your name. And then here is where the terminal is going to stop and allow them to put in some input. So here we can do um, Neo since that's the name of the, the character in the text equals and we can do console dot read line. 
And whatever they return here is what the variable Neo is going to be set as. And just in case you don't believe me, let's actually run this program and see that being printed on the screen. Um, first thing we need to do though is with all these errors, it won't allow us to actually run the program. So let's just comment out this entire thing. Um, whoops, hold on a second. I need to do that and we'll comment this out, comment that one all the way down the line so this doesn't get compiled. And then let's replace this for now with uh, with Neo. So whatever name that we we uh, pass to the terminal, it's just going to spit that right back at us. And that's going to prove to you that we're able to set variables this way. So I'm going to come up here to the top and hit start. And my window actually goes out of frame. I'll bring it on screen. So as we put hello, welcome user, let's play a game of Mad Libs. Share with me your name. And I'm going to put my name, Jabril's. Oh, of course it's going to exit because we also didn't tell it to pause. So let's, um, I think we can do console.wait for, no, let's just do another read key. Console.read key, that's going to wait for a key press and then it's going to exit the terminal. So we run it again, bring it back on screen. Welcome user, let's play a game of Mad Libs. Please share with us your name. I'm going to put Jabril's and it prints right back to us the same variable that we put in, which is uh, lets you know that it's actually working. So now I'm just going to revert back to its original state and we can do Z, control Z, control Z, control Z, control Z, just a bunch of times. And we are back. Well, add semicolon and we are back to our original state. And if you don't have control Z, I think on Apple, it's um, Apple Z, I believe. Uh, but if you don't have either of those buttons, you can come up to edit and then hit uh, undo up here. And that will do the same thing that I did uh, with my shortcut on the keyboard. Also, real quick, uh, let's add at the very end of our process, let's add console, um, console dot read key. This will make sure that it pauses the application before it quits. OK, so now over in Python, let's start to get input from users. Um, so what we want to do here is instead of writing console.write line again, it's as simple as print and we can do print welcome user come down to another print. Let's play a game of Mad Libs and then another print and say, please, please share with me your name and then we can simply do neo equals input uh, well technically technically we can add this string into input and it'll be the same exact thing so we can do this and it, it will print and then whatever the next line is it will get that input however we do need to add a line break here otherwise it's going to uh, it's going to allow you to type right after uh, the question mark we want to go to a new line just to make it a bit more cleaner and so now the cool thing is now that we have our actual name set in the variable neo we can use that with our printing function so if we do console.write line for example uh, let's interpolate the string and do um, hello and then we can do here neo and then exclamation point and then let's say something like uh, uh, are you ready are you ready and then what is something you want to know more oh, running out of space so I'm gonna go to the next line more about you learn how to spell more about and then next line when they answer what they want to know more about we can put that into the matrix so oh, I forgot my semicolon so we can do the matrix equals console dot read line easy as that and over in Python it's pretty much the same exact deal we'll do print uh, what is it? We need to interpolate the string with F. Hello. 
and then this will be Neo. Whoops, Neo. And then are you ready? Are you ready? And then actually I'm going to break this off. Whoops, I'm gonna break this off into another print. Well, actually, I'm gonna make this an input. Input, and then this is uh what is something you want to know, oops, to know more about. And of course, we need to do the matrix variable equals whatever they want to know more about. So just to make sure that you're still with me, just remember that the only thing we're currently working on is get input from user. That's this section right here. Everything else we are not focused on. And within this section, there are only two functions that we're using. The first one is console.readline, which is just simply printing some string to the user. And the second is console.readline, which will return to us whatever that user inputted into their console that we can then assign a variable to it. That's it. Nothing more complex than that. So continuing along with our little storytelling, we can have a little fun and do a console.write line and then interpolate a string and do something like, ooh. And then we can put, um, you want to know more about, and then the matrix, huh? You know, just have fun with it. And then we can do another line, console dot right line, uh, interpolated string. Uh, and let's see, next what we want to do is we want to get the variable system. Uh, and so we need to give them a bit of a context. So we can do something like uh, first, let's see, first, okay. Please bear with me. <laughs> okay, well, first, tell me what you already uh, already know about the matrix. And then let's do one final one, which gives them a bit of instruction, because this is Mad Libs after all. Uh, we're going to do, let's see, what noun would you categorize the matrix as? And then we can add like a little semicolon here. And then finally, finally, we can do system equals console dot read line. Uh, and yeah, pretty straightforward. I, again, I'm just trying to have fun with this Mad Libs as we're getting the data, the information, the input from the user. Uh, and so, you know, you also want to give, you know, this is just all Mad Libs clues right now, but you also want to give the user like some sort of hint as to what word they're replacing. So I simply just ask, what noun would you categorize the matrix as? And yeah, just trying to have fun with it. Over in Python, not much really changes. We're just going to print out the same exact strings. So, so, ooh, oh, you want to know more about, and then we can put the matrix, huh? And then print another line. And this is going to say, okay, well, first, tell me, oops, tell me what you already know about the matrix. Do another line. Uh, we're going to do F, and then what noun would you cat? Categorize the matrix as. Actually, I forget this is Python, so we can actually make this our input and then do system equals this input. And just to prove to you that we're 
just trying to craft the story here. Nothing more complex than that. I'm going to initialize all of these remaining variables as empty strings, just so that that error clears up. Equals empty string, equals empty string, equals empty string, equals empty string. And now we can actually print out this story, even though most of the words, most of the variables are going to be, whoops, equals empty string, are going to be empty strings. Uh, we can print this out. My console goes over to the left. So what is my name? Jabril's. And then as we wrote, hello, Jabril's, gave us our name. Are you ready? What is something you want to know more about? There's a typo there. We can fix that. I want to know more about pizza, for example. Oh, you want to know more about pizza, huh? Okay. Well, first, tell me what you already know about pizza. What noun would you categorize pizza as? I categorize pizza as pie. And then that's as far as we got in our code. So now it does the Mad Libs. It replaces the variables uh, within the actual Mad Libs story. And it, gets, it gives us this. Pizza is a pie, Jabril's. That pie is our, and then it's all empty strings from there. But as you see, this is, this is all we're doing at the moment is this part of the terminal script. Uh, we're just crafting the story. That's all that's to it. Hopefully at this point, I've convinced you that we aren't doing anything complex uh, with this stage. We're just printing out a story to the console and asking for variables. That That's all. So let's just finish off our story um, by moving on. So next thing that I want to do here is, of course, we're going to do console.write line. And we're going to interpolate a string. And what I want to put next is, hmm, let's see. Give me, me an opposing, opposing noun to system, right? Because the next word we're going to get is enemy. We're going to try and replace enemy. And again, we're just trying to give them some sort of hint for a good noun to replace. So that should work. So then we're going to do enemy equals console dot read line. All right. So hopefully this string that I printing that I'm printing to the console is enough to give them a hint on a good word to replace enemy with. Moving on, we're going to do another console dot write line. And what are we getting next? Next, we are going to get the word inside. So let's see. What hint can I give for inside? Uh, I don't know. Relaxing noun. Let's say now give me any relaxing noun. Uh, and of course, this needs to be in the present tense. Present tense. And then we can do inside equals console.readline again. And we just keep on going down the line. We're now going to get caught up to speed in Python. So last left off with system. So we need to print. Let's see, interpolate a string. Let's do, what is it? Give me, me an opposing noun to system. And I always forget this is Python, so we don't have to print and then do a read line. We can just do input. Um, let's see what's the variable's enemy, right? Yeah, enemy equals input. Cool. And then we can do the same thing with inside equals input. And then I'm going to interpolate the string. And then let's do uh, now. Now, give me any relaxing noun. Present tense. All right. Oops, no semicolon, not in Python. Cool. And we are all cut up. Now, next up is the interesting part that we kind of set up a little earlier in the video. Now we need to actually use our for loop for our string arrays. And so we can go about doing that really simply. Just create a for loop for int of i equals zero um i is less than profession dot length 
semicolon I plus plus and then come down here start our brackets and so this for loop is just gonna go through the professions which is next up in the text prompt and we can simply just ask um, let's see um, I guess before that though we need to alert the user say console dot right line and say uh, okay now I need four professions 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 uh, relating to what is this relating to system and then interpolate the string here boom so we let the alert the user what's about to happen I need four professional blading systems and then here we can do um, console dot right line and we're gonna do a course interpolated string here and let's do profession if I have any typos I apologize profession plural because again we're doing businessmen I don't remember them originally businessmen accountants something like that but they're in a plural uh, and then we can just simply um, I'll let them know where they're at by doing I plus one because I is going to be zero starts at zero so we can do that plus one to get it uh, started at one and then simply profession dot link right so what this does let me just walk you through this I think I was a bit vague so what this does uh, simply as we're going through our for loop, there are four different professions. Um, it's going to write to the console, uh, give me a profession, plural, and it's going to print out what number profession they're currently filling out. That's all it is. Uh, and then it's divided by the length is how many professions we need. And I'll show you this example a bit later. But once we do that, then after every single time we print that to the console, we want to read line and assign profession of I to that and that will pretty much populate our entire profession string array all right and to get caught up in Python it's not too difficult of course we need to write out our print uh, and we are currently alerting the player that a for loop is about to happen for the most part so Okay, now I need for professions relating to system, right? And then we got to do our for loop. And for loops in Python are they're a bit different. So we're gonna do for i in range length of profession, and then we'll do our colon, and the next line we'll do profession of I equals input and then here what do we put we put profession uh, which is definitely a typo in the C sharp uh, profession uh -huh. and then plural and then here we want to do I plus one. Oh, this is not interpolated string and add an F to Make an interpolated string divided by length. Oops. Come on. Come on. There it is. Length of profession. And there we have it. They are now currently up to speed. Now, at this point, I'm pretty sure that you could finish this program on your own because we're just essentially going to do the same exact stuff we've been doing. And once you fill out the remainder, what is it, like three or four variables, the application's done. However, I want to take a second to pause because I often don't go this long without leaving comments. Uh, it's always nice to leave comments for yourself in the future or if you're going to send this off to a friend or if you're going to upload it to GitHub for, you know, other developers to try and take apart and learn from. It's always good and nice to leave comments. So let's do that. Um, just to explain what's happening here, I'm just going to say we are uh, getting uh, the matrix variable 
variable from user. It's going to be a lot of those comments. Getting system variable, variable from user, getting enemy variable from user. Wait, I didn't even add system here. System variable from user, sorry. Getting, what is this, inside variable, variable from user. And then this is, uh, I'm just going to say commencing for loop. Oh, uh, no, wait, commencing. Uh, no, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say getting, getting all professions. From user. Also, I know that I have a typo here, so I'm gonna fix that. Profession, yes. <clears throat> um, cool. I'm actually gonna combine these. No, I'm not. And yeah, this really helps me out personally. Uh, oftentimes, when I'm reading code, I'll often look for the green or like where the comments are, whatever color the comments are in the language, I often look for those as like kind of like markers so I can kind of fill out the code and know exactly what's going on where. So it's always good practice to leave comments. In Python, we do the exact same. I'm gonna leave a comment here, getting the matrix variable from user. I, I apologize if I have typos, I'm <laughs> not, terribly concerned about that getting getting system variable from user and then this is going to be getting enemy variable from user and this is getting inside variable from user and this is a uh, getting all profession uh, variable from user. I'm also going to change his profession. I guess that doesn't really matter. Cool. A bit redundant, but it always helps. All right. So I went and did you a favor and pretty much wrote out the rest of the logic for the rest of the variables because it probably would have got a bit too mundane if I were to record it on screen. But we can walk through it anyway. Um, so right after the professions for a loop, we are essentially getting the save variable. And we do that by writing to the console. Give me a hero related verb in the present tense. Again, this is just hints for the user so they kind of have an idea on what word they're replacing. And then we will save whatever string they return to us into the save variable. And then we get the unplug variable, uh, which we do that by writing to the console. Now give me a verb that makes you think about relief in the past tense. Again, just another hint. You can see how mundane it probably would have been. And then whatever string they return to us with console.readline, we will save that into the unplugged variable. And then after that, we need to get our adjectives. There are two of them. So we first warn the user, say, uh, lastly, I need two dystopian adjectives. And then we do a for loop. Um, and simply... Uh, we will tell them that they are currently filling out an adjective and we'll let them know what number they're on out of the total number. And then we will save that to their respective adjective variables, whatever string they return to us. And then lastly, we just need to get the fight variable and we just say, hey, we need a verb on the console. And then whatever string they return to us, we will save that into the fight variable. And that's pretty much it. On the Python side of things, it's the exact same, just in Python syntax. You know, get the save variable, get the unplugged variable, get the two adjectives, do a for loop, and then get the fight variable. And we're done. Great work, guys. Our Mad Libs application is pretty much done. I mean, there's nothing left to do, except there's one thing that I want to do on Python. So the input function is a bit different than the console.readline. The console.readline function will always go to a new line. The input does not. So with that, let's kind of format this a bit. I'm going to do with all the input semicolon and then a space. So whatever question we ask them, they can input that right after 
our question. So I'm going to do that again. Uh, I'm actually going to remove the question mark because it might get a bit confusing with that syntax anymore. So this I'm going to add a space there and then input here. I'll do colon space here. I'll do colon space uh, where else here. I'll do colon space and this is the input space. This is input space uh, here space input here space and boom All right and that's just going to look a lot more cleaner when we're actually playing the game um, in the terminal so all that's left is to play it let's let's actually play it i'm going to run uh, c sharp first i'm going to bring this over here and it says welcome user let's play a game of mad libs please share with me your name my name is jabrils hello jabrils are you ready what is something you want to know more about uh, I want to know more about pizza. Oh, you want to know more about pizza, huh? Okay, well, first, tell me what you already know about pizza. What noun would you categorize pizza as? I'd say pizza is a pie. Give me an opposing noun to pie. Hmm, maybe cake. Now, give us a relaxing noun, present tense. Uh, I guess sleeping is a relaxing noun in present tense. Okay, now I need four professions relating to pie. Ooh, I don't know. Uh, baker, um, cook, uh, chef, I don't know. Um, uh, blah, 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 I don't know. What's the last one? I'm just going to say butcher. I don't know. <laughs> uh, give me a hero related verb in present tense. Hero related verb in present tense. Let's see. Um, save. That's all I can think of. I know that's the actual word, but it's all I can think of. Um, now give me a verb that makes you think about relief. Uh, massage. Massage in past tense. Massaged. Yeah. Is that a verb? Something you do? I guess. I don't know. Uh, lastly, I need two dystopian adjectives. Describing words, um, I don't know, burnt, I guess. And what's another one? Um, uh, dirty, <laughs> I don't know. And a verb, a verb is what you do. Let's say um, what you do, kick. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Pizza is a pie, Jabril's. That pie is our cake. But when you're sleeping, you look around, what do you see? Baker, cook, chef, butcher. Oops, I didn't listen to instructions. It's supposed to be plural. Very minds of the people we are trying to save. But until we do, these people are still a part of that pie. And that makes them our cake. Very deep. <laughs> you have to understand, most of these people are not ready to be massaged. <laughs> And many of them are so burnt, so helplessly dirty on the pie that they will kick to protect it. Art. Absolute art. And now let's play it in Python. Uh, real quick, not sure how I missed this, but we need to put input at the bottom so the console will stay open. But it's a bit different to actually play it with Python. Go up to here up the top where your project file name is, right click and then do reveal and explore. And then wherever your, full, your file is, just double click it and a terminal should pop up. It should look pretty much the exact same, just with the slight Python um, syntax difference that we did. Uh, and so please share with me your name. Uh, my name is, um, what am I going to say? My name is Vegeta. I'm cool this time. Hello, Vegeta. Are you ready? What is something you want to know more about? I want to know more about, um, let's see, not pizza. I want to know more about uh, uh, Skittles. <laughs> Skittles, huh? Uh, okay, well, first tell me. What you already know about Skittles? What noun would you categorize Skittles as? I'd say it's candy. Give me an imposing noun to candy. Ooh, veggies. Uh, now give me any relaxing noun in the present tense. Relaxing noun? Um, uh, person, place, or thing. That's actually probably incorrect, but I would understand what it's asking. Uh, relaxing noun. I don't know. Um, um, 
<laughs> relaxing itself. <laughs> uh, okay, so now I need four professions relating to candy. Um, let's see. Uh, baker. <laughs> um, do that on my clerk. I don't know. It's supposed to be plural. I keep forgetting. It's supposed to be plural. Clerks, baker. I don't know. What do you call a candy maker? I'm looking candy makers. Candy makers. Chocolate. Chocolate factory owners. Um, let's see. Give me a hero relating verb in the present tense. What do heroes do? They save. They fight crime. Um, the verb fight. Fight crime. Fight crime. I don't know. Now give me a verb that makes you think about relief. Um, uh, coding. That's what you do in past tense. Coded. Lastly, I need two dystopian. Let's do um, dystopian. Let's do um, empty, I guess. And let's do uh, good dark and a verb a verb um slide let's see what we got here skittles is a candy vegeta that candy is our veggies but when you're relaxing you look around what do you see bakers clerks candy makers chocolate factory owners the very minds of people we are trying to fight crime <laughs> but until we do these people are still a part of that candy, and that makes them our veggies. Very deep. That is so deep. You have to understand, most of these people are not ready to be coded, and many of them are so empty, so hopelessly dark on the candy, that they will slide to protect it. Wow. Wow, so deep. That's poetry. And there you have it, guys. Congratulations on creating your first ever program. You did it. Congrats, everyone. Believe it or not, you've just written an actual usable program. You can go right now and play this with your friends and loved ones and impress them with your new skills. But if you're still lost, you should feel really lucky because this video is part of a programming course that I put together to teach you everything that you need to know to start programming. And I promise by the end of it, this application will be very easy for you to understand even without my help. I envy all the knowledge that you get to learn. So maybe there's some things that you understood and others that confused you. Well, I designed this course so that you only have to take the lessons that you want to take. No prior lessons required. Make your own curriculum. So what are you waiting for? Check the link in the description to get started.